Thank you. Call to order of the 2018 uh, budget workshop, special budget workshop for the Lighthouse Point City Commission. We will be guided through this journey by our budget <laughs> finance director, award winning esteemed finance director, <laughs> Frank DePaula. Gentlemen, Frank DePaula. You waiting for a standing yeah. ovation? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. 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 I'll give you five. Polite. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we always yeah. use you to the porch. All right, well, um, Sorry, we'll do it at the meeting. But don't we? Thank you for, uh, for yeah, well, okay, so I use that every year, <laughs> every year, I use for the record request. I actually look for a Florida State template. The UF actually has theirs on their website. You can download it. You okay. can't get the Florida State one off their website. I even oh, for, geez, what for people's presentations they post it. I want to throw you a bone after winning the softball national championship. Congratulations. Thank you. So where's the bone? I don't see it. <laughs> you know the most hey, amazing logo, real I've ever seen? Bad Girls Catch, yeah. the third baseman when she came in. I want to go after the business. Nail the runner first. So here we go. So uh, thank you for the opportunity tonight to, to kind of take a brisk walk through the budget, high level overview, and obviously we have plenty of time for discussion and questions uh, throughout the process. Um, as the Commission President pointed out, we are award winning. We got the third year in a row for the, the budget award. We Great got our go. third. Nice we'll put a medallion on there now, so um, we've been doing it for three years, and we've got it all three times. So we're going to apply for it again for this coming year, and hopefully we'll get it again. That's the reason why we don't. Uh, so the, the budget process, uh, I'm not sure what page in the budget book it is, but there's a budget calendar in there that talks about the process, and it just give you kind of an idea of how we go about it. Um, finance puts together, basically we put together some preliminary projections on revenues, and then we ask department directors to give them some information they can use to do their own projections for their departments and develop their initial budget requests. Um, finance receives those. We go through it with each director individually, talk about their budget, and get a sense of exactly what they're asking for and why. And then uh, we come to an agreement on, on the final submission for the budget request. And that's the, the numbers that we take with, um, and we sit down with the city administrator and the mayor at, in an executive level budget discussion. And then from there is where we get to this point, once we've done all those meetings and we put it all together. And um, that's where we are today. So uh, obviously the budget is the annual operating financial plan for the fiscal year. And I've put a copy of the presentation in front of you, the exact same thing that's on the screen here, just in case you can't read something on the screen because it's smaller. If you want to follow along, you want to walk to. So the the city overall for all five budgeted funds, our budget is now over twenty million dollars. Twenty million twenty nine thousand eight hundred seventeen. A big push to that level was the garbage trash fund, which we'll talk about in a little bit. As you're aware, we discussed with the last commission meeting that the rates came back a little bit higher than uh, what we had all anticipated, I believe. So there's going to be some talk about that later tonight. But I'll talk about that briefly also as I go through the budget. The general fund overall increase is 4% compared to the current year projection. Current year includes some one-time things like Hurricane Irma recovery. That's in there. Those costs, uh, which obviously we're still working on getting reimbursement for that. And, uh, but otherwise, for the most part, the tennis center fund is pretty much the same. And debt service fund doesn't change each year because that service amount is still the same. And the stormwater fund had an increase due to the just following along with the capital plan, and um, yeah, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Frank, did I understand why is why are Hurricane Irmix are those reflected in the fiscal year 2018 projected or why? Yes. Oh, okay, all right. I thought it sounded like they were going to be in the 2018 2019. So, but that was 188,000. Is that what you're projecting it? Sorry, what, the Hurricane Irma. You said expenses. Is that the 188,896 in the bottom for no, surplus? I mean, that's, that's just. Is that where we're like waiting for that to come in, or is that what I'm going to ask? Yeah, that? I mean, we. I mean, I know that. So just, yeah, if it weren't for the, the hurricane or other stuff, we would probably have a surplus this year. Gotcha. That's, how you go. that's the so, question. Okay. Yeah. So, just overall, the proposed budget includes, like I said, overall increased government expenditures. We try to be conservative about forecasting revenues. 
and um, we're keeping our millage rate for operating the same. Um, fees were still among the lowest in the county. The um, fire assessment is project, we're project, we're requesting a increase in that again, and I'll discuss that in a moment or two. That's also still going to be most likely the lowest, if not the second lowest in the county. The property taxes this year for our assessed values, we had a 7.18% increase on the June 1st valuation. July 1st are the final numbers that we use for our budget, and we'll get those in probably about a week or a few days, actually. And they, they won't change much. We, we may get a slight increase or slight decrease, but these are pretty much the numbers that we're going to work with, give or take a very, very small difference. Operating millage, no change. Debt service millage, decreasing by 0.018. That's due to both the increase in assessed values and using a little bit of some fund balance. We, we get delinquent collections each year that we don't budget for, and we end up usually getting a little bit more than we assumed in the budget. So now we have a little bit of fund balance and debt service funds, so I'm going to use that next year to offset some of the costs so that we can lower the military. It's, I mean, it's, we're talking this, it's a teeny bit, but it's, you know, we, we can't sit on that money. We have to use it to pay for the debt. Our assessments, uh, requesting a $15 increase for residential fire assessment would be $135. It's currently $120. That raises around $100,000 in additional revenue. Stormwater fund, not recommending any change. And garden and trash fees, there's going to be a possible increase again. We've gotten a preliminary rate request from waste management that could change depending on a few factors. I believe they're going to be here tonight to discuss their proposal and exactly why they requested that amount. And um, like I said, there's some opportunities to maybe lower that based on changing the service, the way it's collected. But um, that'll be for you all to decide. And but for the, for the time being, I think it was about a $14 increase per month. So um, so that's pretty significant. Right. On the 7.18% increase, and I know that's the number you're given, basically, from the property appraiser or assessor, um, that's that's higher than it's traditionally been over past years, which I thought odd because the market was very hot for several years, and now it's, I would think, to the extent I can predict real estate markets, it's kind of leveled off to a certain degree. Do we get any input as to why we now have jumped so suddenly? No. Um, the, I mean, the countywide increase for municipalities is 763 so we're still right. We're, so we're always trailing a little bit behind the the, the, the median or okay. the average. But um, I mean, things are starting to level off a little bit. I think it's just attributed to um, the waterfront properties. The prices of, of waterfront is still holding its, its value, especially in Lighthouse Point compared to like Pompano and Deerfield. And we did have some um, some new construction come in as okay. usual. So yeah, we had. 50, 60 houses year over year over year on, you know, new two-story construction on the water. So I wonder if some of that may have yeah. there, there, There's a significant amount of new construction in, in factoring into that. Okay. Because the homestead value was up by, what, 2.1%? Yes. Yeah, so if, if homestead is going 2.1, and we're, our, the breakdown of our properties is predominantly homestead exempt, so we had to have way higher than 7%. To bring us down of the non homestead properties, you know, to get us there. So it's, um, yeah, we, we did pretty well this year. Uh, as you would notice in the budget schedule, we have a use of fund balance of $84,000. So essentially, that's a, that's a budget deficit. And we're going to plug that hole by using some accumulated fund balance. So to talk quickly about revenues, there really isn't too much of a change here in the breakdown from year to year. It's about 51% is, it comes from our ad valorem taxes. So about half of our revenues, and you can see there's a whole bunch of other smaller ones. It's like a third there. But there's a whole bunch of other ones that uh, make up the, the difference. And the next biggest one is facility service taxes. We get from FPL, we get from Broward County. And then intergovernmental, which is all our state of Florida revenues, um, we get some grants, we have some county grants, and also some, um, some federal stuff, very minimal though. Okay, so the increase in ad valorem, keeping the same millage rate, along with those assessed values, gives us around 505000 in budgeted revenues. Gas taxes, 
those are based on population charts per gallon of gas sold in the county. It pretty much doesn't change that much. We have projected a slight increase on that, just based on trend. Franchise fees also 1.4 percent increase on trend. FPL <coughs> plus you. FPL is the main driver of that revenue. Utility service taxes also slight increase. Our community, communication services tax were really coming down a lot, and it was not looking very good. It's actually turned up a little bit and starting to come back up. I don't know if it has to do with just maybe they did some changes with the um, with maps and got more properties in there that they weren't aware that it should have been going to Lighthouse Point. But uh, but it's actually turning back around. It could just have to do with the overall subscription of services that people are purchasing. Licenses and permits. Um, the 8.8 percent decrease projected. That's compared to. So the current year, where we think we're going to end, and the current year we think we're going to end higher than what we budgeted. So, um, not going to just assume we're going to get that amount again next year. So, um, overall, this 8.8 percent decrease for the coming year is still higher than we budgeted this year. So the, the trend is still going up. Uh, we don't have as many of the single-family home rebuilds, but their the permanent activity is still really strong. There's a lot of remodels. There's, I mean, um, there's no shortage of work in the building permit department right now. They're keeping very busy. So we expect that to continue, and unless there's you know some other external factors come into play. Fire services special assessment again proposing a $15 rate increase, raising additional $100,000, and um, still I believe the lowest right now is Florida by the Sea, and they're $129. They have a volunteer fire department, and they pay 100% of their their fire costs with that $129. So it's hard to really compare to them. But this $100,000 will help um, keep up with the cost of operations, salaries, as well as um, there's an item in there for pension due to the change that's going on right now with the transition to FRS that we're still hoping is going to happen in the near future. So I'll talk about that in a few minutes as well in some more detail. Okay, intergovernmental 5.4% increase, or sorry, decrease. We, again, we had a pretty strong year on some of those line items. And Trying to be conservative, not just expecting it to keep happening year after year. So, um, so again, expecting some increase, but um, but not as much as the current year, and, and hopefully we'll be surprised and get even more next year. Also, I've been here for six years now, and I've been projecting revenues year after year. What I did this year was actually put together. A, a, I looked at all the historical revenues for the last ten years or so, and then projected this coming year plus another five years based on the trends. So I'm trying to be more precise, as, as precise as possible with the revenues. I don't want to just be conservative and just downplay everything and then end up with a windfall. I mean, we really need to be as close as we can within a, a good degree of accuracy just because our costs are continuing to go up. And, and if there's money there, we want, to, we want to budget it and we want to make sure we have enough to pay for our for operations. Uh, charges for services, really no change at all. Those are It's a small overall revenue item, and it's based on fees predominantly. The biggest one is the um, transport fees, ambulances. So if there's no change to that one, and, and, and we really haven't changed the fee schedule, then overall things are going to be pretty stable there. Okay, lastly, um, fines and forfeitures. Obviously, the big one there is code enforcement violations. Collecting a good amount this year, and way higher than budget and it went with the eighty thousand dollar revenue projection that's just our our target we go with every year. Miscellaneous revenues, interest earnings, um, the fire special assessment is not in there anymore, so I can scratch that. That actually we moved that to the correct object code. It actually goes under permits and is, and fees now licenses and permits. That's where it belongs according to the state of Florida. So um, but really um, this is interest earnings contributions uh, from outside sources, which is just kind of like miscellaneous revenue, and insurance reimbursements for damages and things like that. Also disposal of fixed assets. It's a relatively small line item. Other sources, so we have transfers in from the garbage and trash fund and stormwater fund, and we also have the lease purchase revenue that is $68,000 for next year. For expedition purchase for the city administration, uh, three four explorers for the police department, Police Department radio upgrades, um, Life Pack 15 unit for the Fire Rescue Department, and the Dump Truck for Public Works. Those are all items that we're going to finance for next year. Right, that's right. One question: You mentioned insurance. 
I know we talked about the storm before. Uh, what, what's our overall expenses, and what have we put in with FEMA? We we have approximately. It's, what was our outlay? Actual resources committed to the storm is close to a million dollars, but a lot of that includes cash. What's cash? Cash committed to the cash. Outlay. Yeah, I mean, actual money spent was probably in the six seven hundred thousand dollar range. That's so but when you say cash. You're meaning like paying overtime. That's cash. Yeah. Overtime, vendor expenses, right. you know, contractual yeah. services. Over and above regular salaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's some of the, some of the regular stuff we can actually recover because people were doing something that was not their regular day job, and it is allowable for for yeah. other categories of expenses, but not for the other ones. So we, we tr we're trying to recoup as much as possible, and it includes even some of the straight time that our employees work. We would have been paying them for anyway. Mm -hmm. And have we put in all the stuff for FEMA already, or is that because it usually goes in segments? Yeah, well, what we've done is we've been putting stuff in, and it hasn't been finalized yet. Uh, we actually just got another bill from the county finally. We've been waiting to get their, we talked and talked about it, we've been waiting to get their uh, disposal fees because we did take a number of debris loads to the county sites when we couldn't go to the waste management site. So now that I have that, um, we can, we're pretty much getting close to finalizing everything. And um, I'm meeting with FEMA on a pretty regular basis. They come to the city, we sit down and go over everything. Uh, the way they've done things is, it's, it's, it seems easier because everything's online now. You just go in and you just submit everything. But you don't just put together your own document and say, here, here's everything, review it. Everything has to be done in these different channels. And you have to do the same thing about 37 times over and over again. And you have to make sure you've done every single, it's, it's really complicated, but um, but that's why they, they're here, they're working with us, and hopefully have everything submitted by mid-July, that's the goal. So um, we do have a few projects that were done, and we can get those um, submitted right away now that um, we finish this, this last one with the sidewalks. But overall, we're, we're, we're very close in the process of having everything put in. And have we received any reimbursements at all? No. When would we expect, can you predict when we may get the, the first Tranche of reimbursements? No. I can't. Okay. Okay. They used to forward out money just as soon as you submit. They would just forward you a chunk of money, and now they don't like to do that anymore. They really want to go through it before they give you a dime. So I, it could be six months before we actually get a penny. Okay. Frank, if memory serves me right, wasn't Matthew about 14 months post storm before we got the money? Um, it was It was about a year, I think more than a year. And that was, yeah, that was a small one. That was a real easy one. I mean, it still affected a lot of counties, but that was an easy one compared to this. Yeah. Because that was just pretty much just um, uh, type of measures. There was no debris removal and any of that stuff. So it could take a while. Cool. Yeah. It's expensive, Storm. Mm -hmm. uh, it's crazy. Well, the problem is it affected the entire state oh, because it went vertically up the yeah. state, and there hadn't been anything like that in a hundred years. Maybe for us, I mean, just but just for us as a city. But you talk, you look at some other cities, and it's yeah. just amazing. Yep. Coupled with that, it's the FEMA they just rolled out this whole new process of everything online, so it's kind of like a learning learning curve for everybody. So it's that's going to make it, I think, that much more time consuming to get everything done. So, okay. all right. So uh, moving on to Expenditures, payroll. We had uh, we have an increase in the budget for all employees. We have uh, the total full-time equivalent employees count increased slightly. We had one reduction, um, moving a, a position that was in-house in the building department back to contract, but then that was offset by some addition of some part-time uh, hours in the library, recreation, and code compliance. Insurance, health insurance, projecting 10 percent. I can't get the numbers yet. I'm really hoping to get them as soon as possible, but I've been told no more than 10%. We should be in single digits, but we're trying to be safe with that. Workers' comp and liability insurance, we have preliminary estimates on those. Um, a little bit of an increase on workers' comp and profit and liability should be no increase or pretty flat in the prior year. Capital outlay, we have a lot of requests from departments. Those are in the budget, and we'll discuss those in a couple of months. And that's a tiny little chart. But basically, that breaks down our categories Sorry, our functions of expansion of expenditure. So public safety is the biggest. That is our police, fire, code enforcement, and building permits. And then next we have general government, which is all of our administrative divisions. And then following is physical environment, which is public works, community bus, culture recreation, that's our library and recreation department. 
and, and capital outlay. Everything. This is one way to categorize everything that we do it in um, governmental accounting. And what we do is take capital outlay and strip it out from all of the farms and put it as a separate item. Same thing with debt service. Capital outlay, big. That's big project. That's I mean, it's defined in here as over half a million dollars. So yeah, that's it's anything that we're buying that has a useful life of more than a year, generally speaking. Oh, more than a year. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So anything like that, we capitalize. We consider them to be fixed assets, and some of them we finance, some of them we pay cash. That's a big chart. So we have these are categories of expenditures. So personal services, seventy-seven percent. As usual, that's always our biggest one. It's always somewhere in the 75 to 80 percent range. We are a labor-intensive industry. Operating expenditures are 17 percent of our total, and then the remaining six percent is broken out between capital, debt service, transfers out, and grants to other organizations. Grants or other organizations is around 10,593 dollars. As a 95-93 goes to every agency on aging. We have a thousand in the budget for Broward Regional Health Plan. So that used to be down the center. And breaking down a little bit further, personal services, we have a 7% increase, and we have pay increases for employees, we have higher health insurance costs, we have higher retirement contributions. If, um, if you read in the budget message, there's $250,000 of funding in there to pay pension costs that could come up. There could likely be a shortfall this coming year based on a number of our employees vacating the current pension plan and moving to the FRS. Obviously, we don't, that hasn't happened yet. Um, I know that we've been going back and forth with the. Uh, are those actuary numbers? Is that an actuary in study? Actuary. No, actuary. We 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 can't we can't get anything until people actually leave the plan. And okay. Once they do, we can have another actuarial study and to see what that immediate impact is going to be on the current year funding. Because the valuation that we have we would normally have performed for 10 one 18 is going to assume that people are going to continue to approve service. Right. And then once they stop approving service, then the answer is going to look at it again and say, okay, well, here's the amount of money that's going to be needed to fund this plan for the whole year because you don't have employees paying into it anymore. So um, we have to put something in the budget to be ready for that. It, it could be much higher. It could be much lower. So uh, but there has to be something in there. Yeah, that's my question on the, on the pension issues. Um, so... You're kind of projecting. You're, you're not so much projecting what the pension will look like, whether it's FRS or or we stay with the current thing. You're just projecting the number because we don't know what's going to happen. Well, I can tell you that what we've done is assume that all, for the most part, all public safety employees will go to the FRS, and their contribution rate is 24 and a half percent which is higher than our current contribution okay. rate that we're paying right now. So we've taken that into account in the budget. In addition to that, not only is there regular pay pensionable for overtime, and a bunch of other additional pays are also now pensionable. So um, so we've already kind of put that in the budget. On top of that, in the current plan, every year that goes by, we're always going to have a funding need, whether um, bottom line is the city is always going to be on the hook. If there's any shortfall, because let's say we didn't meet our interest rate assumption target for the year and our revenue uh, earnings, well, then someone's got to come up with that money to keep the plan whole for the year because the plan just needs to get a certain amount of money a year to keep it funded on an annual basis. So that's what the $250,000 is for, is that when everyone vacates the plan next year, which is what, I'm, what we're assuming is going to happen, then there's going to be some type of a shortfall or required funding by the city for the remainder of the year to keep the plan solvent for this year. Is that in addition to what we may have to contribute in fiscal 2018-2019 to FRS for our portion? Or yes. That, that's, that's, so that's just the downfall to keep. That 250 is the shortfall to keep our pension solvent in this budget. Do you have a keep separate it funded. Keep it funded. Sorry, not solvent. Thank you. It's very solvent. Um, but is that, what's the number you're projecting for us to contribute to FRS for 2018-2019? Give me a moment. Yeah, I'm just curious since this is new for everybody. I saw you use the percentage. I never actually saw a physical dollar amount. That's what I saw. So. Yeah, I only, I, only ever, I only saw a percentage. I never saw a dollar amount.
Craig, I don't want to slow you down. Okay. If you want, if you want to get me back to get the number, that's fine as well. Okay. If you look at page 32, this includes all retirement contributions, not just FRS. Oh, I saw 24. It also has it too. Page 32, the proposed is 1.9 million dollars in round numbers. That's inclusive of the 250. No, that in, that includes everything, but that also includes the 401 for the non-union. Okay. Non so that's not you're saying that 1.9 is not all police and fire. It's, every, it's everybody according to this. But does that include the 250 that we would have to put in our own? I believe it does. I'll give the number in about 10 seconds. Just hang on. You know, it's, right there. it's not a budget meeting. It must be challenged. You know, he's award winning. We got to make sure he steps yeah. up. His. So we're both winning. Um, okay. So the total that I have one on twenty four too, Jason. Is about Bottom one. Hand side. A million two hundred fifty thousand to FRS. So it's a million two fifty to FRS, two fifty to for the to Lighthouse Point pension, Correct. and then call it the other four to general employee and other mm -hmm. financial mm -hmm. Okay. And so my other question is, come September when we approve this budget, what do we do if we're not we're not at FRS or if we don't think that's going to happen or what, what do we well, do in that situation? Well, I think we're all hopeful that we'll be there, but we're still we're still in negotiations with fire um, in terms of there's some wordsmithing going on between the lawyers. Other than that, the agreement um, last conversation I had with the fire department was they're done. As a matter of fact, a firefighter walked up to me and thanked me for getting it done. Um, police, um, John, are we still on for a negotiation? We're on right. Thursday at 2.30. Thursday at 2.30, police negotiations. We've uh, made them an offer, and they're coming back, uh, I guess, with a counterproposal, so let's see what they have to say. I guess, but could you see this budget? I'm keeping my, everybody's keeping their fingers crossed. But do we see this budget changing based on how these negotiations proceed? Because I, I, guess, I guess I have a hard time approving a budget in September if we don't think we're going to FRS. I guess that's my concern, I guess, to put it bluntly. Well, I think that um, I think the mayor pretty much summed it up that we're, we're right there with fire. There's not really much in the way at this point. Police is probably a little longer of a haul, but, um, but they're, they're coming back to the table, and okay. I think that the likelihood is that it will happen. It's not going to happen on October 1. I think that even if we had an agreement with fire tomorrow, and then by just, just the, the process of, it, of going yeah. through it, just to get to the point of someone actually Putting in their paperwork from FRS, the earliest that could probably happen is, is November at this point. Okay. Possibly sooner, but I, I would count on, on one person going to the FRS before October 1. Okay. Fair enough. So, so to Jason's point, point, though, as we approve this budget, we're sort of helping on the fly that you've projected based on reasonable expectations. I don't know what else we could do at that point. And if we're throwing a real curveball, then We'll have to figure out where else to get revenue or whatever. Well, if we don't, go, if they don't go to FRS, yeah. cheaper, the contributions are probably lower. That right. is what it comes down to as of right now. Okay. Um, so we have to make a reasonable assessment of what. So we're assuming that we're going to get there at some point, but as much as I hate to assume, because we don't know what that means, it's a reasonable approach. Um, part of the problem we're dealing with with fire, I'm sorry, with police, is that there's now three unions competing to represent them. And we don't know where that's going to go and what that does if there's a change. We're hopeful that they move forward and Thursday we make some get some traction, but all we can do is make reasonable expectations. I don't have a crystal ball to present a budget. Got it. Okay. I'm very hopeful that we're going to get somewhere on Thursday. But I've been accused of being the eternal optimist on this too. Okay, so moving on to um, overtime, we also had a higher than normal year due to the hurricane. Beginning of the year, we didn't have a whole ton. Most of the overtime occurred in September, but we had a good amount that occurred in October that affected this current year. So next year, 1819 should project a little bit lower than what we saw this year, even with salary increases and so on. Okay, 
question is it would be lower than a C7% increase, personnel services, and that you assume that overtime would be lower. A little confused. Because you said it would be lower, not higher. Overall personal services are up, but the overtime will be lower. Overtime will be a little bit lower. Okay. Operating expenditures, we had a 5.4% increase. Again, we had some stuff in the current year due to Hurricane Irma. So um, if we didn't have that, we might be a little bit higher this coming year, percentage-wise, compared to the current year. And we have a, a large item in there for contractual services for a city code rewrite. It's about 175000 Yeah, can we pause there? Um, sure. What is that? What is that? What is that based on? I mean, I'm all for, you guys have heard me say we, the city code needed an upgrade. I'm just curious how you got that estimate. It's just based on an estimate that uh, we spoke to uh, Mike Cirillo. We looked at what other cities have paid recently to rewrite their code. Um, Pompano was about 200000 a couple a few years ago. Okay. So we had to come up with an estimate. And we felt that was a reasonable starting place. Um, a code rewrite is going to take some time. It may actually lack a year. So we may be dealing with this again, but uh, we've got to start somewhere. And okay. well, it was very reasonable based upon what we've seen with other cities. And uh, Mr. Cirillo and his firm will be intimately involved in that project. As will I. You think you just learned. <laughs> you, you may be when it comes time to <laughs> present it to the commission. And we may do a workshop on that before we do any Yeah, we just, uh, I, I just hadn't heard anything about it, so I was kept up the other day. So. Oh. Yeah, it was high for, I mean, listen. We've been, we've been talking about it. Oh, we've been talking about it. When, when I became mayor, that was one of uh, my initial goals to get that moved along. Unfortunately, other things came up and got in the way. But uh, now's the time to get it done. Okay. All right. Okay. Moving on to capital outlay. It's down 33% from the current year projection. Uh, current year included some significant items. We had the multi-site surveillance system that actually was budgeted in the prior year, but it didn't kick off until really October, November. So the expenses actually fell into this current fiscal year we're in now. And we also had a, a number of fire department equipment purchases that were actually in the budget. And I'm going to go over these, um, some of the larger items for next year on the next slide. Debt service is a 20% increase just based on the financing that's going to take place this current year, which um, I'm going to bring uh, forward on the next Commission agenda. And next year's proposed financing, which as I mentioned was about $268,000. We have transfers out, 136206 dollars to the tennis center to keep up with operating needs. It's actually about the same amount as the current year. And we always transfer ten thousand for Keeper's Day, ten thousand for Life House of Glow, and another four thousand for holiday bridge decorations to the rec support fund that that can use that for those events. Hey Frank, while we're on the topic of debt service. I assume nothing in the fiscal 2018-2019 budget would be impacted um, with respect to the possible passage of the bond in November because none of the financing would hit or any borrowing would occur or anything would happen in fiscal 2018-2019? I, I don't think so. I think the quickest that we could move is we could possibly have the financing done in March or April, but if we structure it so that we don't have any payments due until the following year. Okay you know, like November or something like that, which we can do that. We just, we just pay more accrued interest in the meantime, but basically we would, it would all come into play in the 1920 fiscal year in line with the millage rate increase, you know, for the voted debt. So nothing in this budget contemplates a, a bond, a big, the big bond we've been talking about? Nope. What about things like a rendering that we're going to do in advance to promote? You're, talk, you're talking about the PowerPoint and all the renderings of the station? Right. That's that's being paid for this year. Okay. All right. Capital outlay, there's the table, and it's a little bit hard to see. The table's also in your, your booklet there. And um, from top to bottom, highest to lowest, uh, the biggest number is three uh, replacement patrol units for the police department. Those are going to be financed. I think um, we're replacing a couple of four or five five year old units. Well, we're replacing we're replacing really old Crown Victorias, old units, but then everything we replace the oldest ones and everything else steps down. So um, some really old, costly vehicles will go out of service. Uh, dump truck for Public Works replaces an existing vehicle. 
there's a line item for a voice over IP phone system that would replace all phones across the city into one integrated system, which um, it's pretty neat. They have some systems now where you know, we don't even have to have hardware on the site. All we have is the phones. You plug them into a cable, and all the processing and routing is all done in a data center run by whatever company we contract with. So we, we don't even have to have equipment on site. And you can take that phone anywhere in the world and plug it in, and now you're at work. Anybody calls your work number, it goes to that phone. Yep. It's pretty neat stuff. And I mean, our system here, I think the police is a little bit better than, than City Hall, but the City Hall system, I joked with the vendor when he was here once, they put a new uh, card in it, and I said, so what does that bring us up to like 2001 now? And he's like, no, like 2003. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, so I mean, even they admit, you know, we have a very old system and, and the time has come. We have a $50,000 item in there, um, just in case there's any hardware, professional services costs in the year. Depending on what company you go with, they, some of them don't charge you for the phones depending on what model you get. Some of them might have to pay a couple hundred bucks a piece. And, um, but the, the actual monthly cost of the system should be paid for by reducing our phone bill because we don't have to carry all these phone lines anymore or long distance or any of that stuff. All those features go away. So we can save around $1,500 a month on our phone bill and then use that to pay the monthly cost of the phone system. It really just pays for itself. The other beauty of the system is, is you can literally go online and uh, if there's a problem, you can call forward the phone wherever you want, to, want it to go to. So if the city hall goes down for whatever reason, you can just call forward city hall over to the building department as an example automatically. Mm. Um, you don't even need access to the phone. Um, after Irma, my professional office, we did it four years ago, and it was a substantial monthly savings. But in addition to that, after Irma, our building was shut for four weeks. I literally brought the phone home, plugged it into my home phone, and I had my office phone up and running. Mm. Cool. Okay. And then um, working downward, a police department has to purchase, they have to pay the software upgrade for the radios to get them on the newest standards. That's kind of a required thing. And um, library books and publications, that's a customer request. Light Tech 15, the, I think Chief Donzell had been asking for that before he left them. That's been on there for a couple years, but it hasn't ever really made the cut. So now that one is in there. We're going to finance that as well. Uh, replacement vehicle for city administrator. Tennis center lighting. Um, that number could come down quite a bit when we get someone out there to really see what needs to be done. We've had an estimate done, but um, it just depends. Going to add some lighting and replace some lights. And then lastly, Public Works uh, request to paint City Hall Library and Police Department buildings. They will seal the entire exterior and paint them. And, um, and that's $25,000. There's a few other items that are below that line that are. Um, they're, they're not as significant in nature, but definitely much needed. Frank, is that 25 grand? Is that we'll hire a third party to do that? Absolutely. Or? Okay. okay. Yeah. That, that seems almost a little low. I know it's a high price, but painters aren't cheap. I mean, did we just kind of test it? Did ball that number? Or? No, we had our number. We did? Okay. Commissioner Joffe, yeah, I heard is a great painter, so I think that. In my hand, I was just painting today. <laughs> and, I just, and, I, and I had to hire somebody. I'll give you his name. He was good. Okay, any questions on the capital outlay before I move on? Um, individual departments, city commission, huge increase. What we did was we put, a, we put a number in there for the closed captioning of the video of the commission meetings and all the other city board meetings. Um, We're going to have to block out Glenn. He's not allowed to appear on the... Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that 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 Why is it under our <laughs> budget? Should that be under like the whole entire city budget? Because it's good for all of us? You are the whole city. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so that's about, I think it's about $23,000 is the number that we put in there. And that covers for the whole fiscal year. As we know, that's something that we need to do at this point, so there's no avoiding it. Mayor's department had really no change at all. Finance administration, 12.5% increase. Put a request in there for contract staffing to assist with payroll and HR functions. And uh, some capital requests, I've already mentioned the city administrative vehicle. City clerk has requested several new computers. Theirs are about five or six years old, and they're not running very well. And they also need some new software. City attorney has a 4% decrease. Um, he's not being kind and charitable and giving us a break on this retainer. That's just because we had a lot of additional work this year, not budgeted for just other services. And we don't expect that much next year, so that decreases compared to the current year, which was higher than normal. How much is that closed captioning going to cost? I think we can put in 20, 22 or twenty-three thousand dollars for that for the year. For the year, and that would cover cover all of our meetings. 
And that's going to be now we're going to, well, Jennifer was telling me before the meeting, but we're going to be live streaming. That will be live streaming. Yeah. We'll be live streaming. Yeah. What's our total dollar figure for that whole system with this closed captioning? I believe we spent 32000 on the cameras. I don't recall what the month, what the annual maintenance fees are. It's about thirty-five hundred a year, five thousand a year, something like that. The first five-year cost was over fifty thousand, as yeah. I recall. Mayor, you're correct. It was close to sixty thousand for the first five years, and then so this one. Per year? Okay. No, no over, right. five, over five years. Okay. That was for the hardware, and then and, and maintaining the system. But it was okay. about sixty thousand over five years. It was about plus 7,500. It was the 32,000 plus 7,500 a year. Now this will add another 20,000. Do we know how many hits we're getting on the thing? I haven't checked in a while. Well, the, the last time I checked, we hit, we were averaging somewhere under 15. We had one meeting that averaged over 30. Now we did have we did have to take it down for a while because of the litigation issues. We've now started closed captioning. We've got temporary fix we're using. And so going forward, those are being posted on YouTube. And then once we go to this, we'll then be doing it real time again. Okay. Support services. All the lawyers fall. Support services, 9.7% uh, decrease. Uh, that's kind of our catch-all department. The budget for our city staff, for, um, life and long-term disability in there, our city liability insurance. Our capital lease payments we make on an annual basis, as well as um, IT support services through California, <coughs> and any other miscellaneous equipment needs for IT that we have, we pretty much put them there. And um, as I mentioned, there was an increase in the debt service. That's pretty much what's driving that 9.7%. And police department, 7.7% overall increase, and um, big number in there is the pension funding, as well as the vehicles and the other capital items. There's other items that the, that the chief will be requesting through the use of federal forfeiture funds. That's going to be on the regular meeting agenda tonight. Fire department, it's an overall 2% increase, but 9.8% personal service cost increase. Um, big thing there is that we had, we really haven't had an assistant fire chief for most of this year. So are we hiring them? Uh, yes. Okay, so that's why there's a big jump compared to this current year because we just haven't had that cost this year. And we also have a pension funding in there. And um, really minimal capital requests, just a couple of items that were discussed. This was the big year for fire rescue. There was a lot of purchases made this current year. Uh, building department 20% increase mainly because of the code rewrite contractual services line item. Code enforcement, 10.8% increase. Um, it really doesn't fluctuate very much, but this year we put in a request for part-time staffing to assist with code enforcement on the weekends. So that's what's driving that increase on code enforcement. Public works, 11.5% decrease. Again, current year had Hurricane Irma, so we're going to be a little bit lower in the coming year. Also, we have some much-needed capital purchases in the budget for the coming year. Right. So taking out the extraordinary expenses we had, especially with Hurricane Irma, for some major purchases, I mean, how do these uh, increases, decreases compared to the actually budget amount last year? I'd have to get, a, I can put together a budget to actual. And, and yeah, you can do that. I think, and I think that's important for, you know, anybody who comes to the meetings to see that. Because this, you know, 11% de decrease in public works, but... You know, it's because we had an extraordinary income, extraordinary expenses, I should say. They kind of skew a lot of these things. And the other thing is that the budget is, sometimes it's, it's good to compare the budget, sometimes we just didn't budget properly. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, it doesn't mean that we, our costs but are award winning, so I'm sure. Yeah. It was well, closed <laughs> <laughs> No one has a crystal ball. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But just <laughs> nice to know how we did from a budgeting standpoint. Sure. That's an extraordinary. When, when, or more expenses. when would you like to see some type of an analysis like that? Like your next meeting or next board or next uh, workshop meeting? 
They just circulate it. You can circulate it if you want to bring it up in a meeting. Yeah. yeah. Just circulate it. Yeah, I just think it's part of the workshop okay. process and the budget process. Let's give it to Jennifer as a follow-up, and then you know, we could schedule it for a future commission meeting. And it doesn't have to be elaborate. Just go down kind of by the departments. Because I know we can kind of go through here and pick it out, but it's probably a two-page. Two it's kind of sorted in here, but you've got right. I have to pull all that out. So you got to pull out the to stuff. make it easy, just from public works. Bing, 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 bing. Okay. Um, that's it for that slide. So moving on to the bus slide increase. Um, they do get pay increases. They're a part of the general employees contract schedule, and um, so that drove a little bit of an increase in that department. Library, we have an increase in personal services due to. Request for additional staffing. A uh, part-time children's librarian. Um, there are some small increases to operating expenses and the materials budget to, to keep up with the demands of the library. Recreation has an overall increase of 5.1%. Um, there was personal services are also up because of the additional part-time position, but uh, we, we had a lot of capital this current year. Next year is not as capital heavy, so the overall budget um, is actually down a little bit. And I'm currently completing the Dan Witt Potluck. Yeah. Well, beautiful. So yeah, that's very nice. And, um, and again, like I said, a lot of lower capital expenditures for the coming year. And as I mentioned, the transfer to the tennis center is down slightly. So that's it for the general fund. I'm just going to move on to the other funds. Very slightly, but it's about the same. Tennis center fund had a slight increase to the total budget. Um, about a 5% increase of personal services, just, you know, that's, again, hourly rates, uh, pension, health care, all that kind of stuff. Operating expenditures, resurfacing force, and then other necessary repairs and maintenance. And general fund transfers down slightly. The membership rates, there's always an increase each year. It's based on the CPI. Put that into effect on October 1. And... Um, Total number of memberships is around 160 right now. I think we had 166 last year at the same time. Does that include junior memberships? Yes. How many junior memberships are there? Is it a significant number? Is it like... Okay. No, I, I didn't think it was significant. I was just curious. The biggest is, is adult yeah. resident memberships. Those are the, that's the biggest number of them. Uh, the reason I was asking is my son's always looking for a game, but Greg said can never arrange one for him because I guess there's not that many juniors over there, so I was just curious. I was going to ask a really like broad, macroeconomic question, but I can challenge you. Um, if we are, as people say, entering an inflationary period, how does that generally affect municipal budgeting and municipal government? I mean, our, should, I would think, just thinking out loud, it, it shouldn't. We're earning a little bit more on our money, but other than the general cost of everything going up, it shouldn't have a major impact. Is that a fair statement? Well, I am not an economist, right. but just from my, my limited experience in government and being here for a few years, um, just looking at the big things. One of the big things for us, obviously, is ad valorem tax revenues. If the prices of everything is going up, if there's now going to be tariffs on building materials and the prices of homes are going to increase and all that, I mean, all that should be driving the price of homes, and that flows down to us in the form of higher okay. ad valorem revenues, which could be a good thing. On the other hand, uh, you know, almost 80% of our costs are personnel. So, you know, increases in fuel prices, increases in utilities, they don't have that big of an impact on our budget because it's, it's a really small percentage of the total $16 million budget that we have. But our, and I don't, the big driver on the cost of personnel is obviously salaries and the rate of increase year over year is what drives that because most of the other costs other than health care are based on our, our, our salaries, workers' comp rates, all that stuff. So, so, so and I mean, the, I guess the answer is I, I don't know how much of an impact it has. Um, I don't, we'd have to do a study on it and look and compare our costs in the city to periods of inflation. It's just, it's, it's really hard to say. And, and, and it's, it's your all's decision to decide how we want to cover those costs. And, you know, if, things, if inflation is there and things are going up, then theoretically salaries would be going up too. So you wouldn't have as much of a problem raising taxes knowing that hopefully that people can pay for it. If you have to pay for things and the revenue is just not there. 
Not an easy question to make, but handled excellently. Thank you. Thank you. So, any more questions on Tennis Center? Any garbage and trash lines? You have a significant budget increase. You know, if the rates were being charged go up, we have to pass those on to the customers. And we're going to refine that budget once rates are finalized in the, in the next few weeks. Hopefully, we're going to establish them with pretty good confidence on um, on July 10th. And part of the problem is it's not really a problem, but it's it's an, it's, a, it's an issue. We have now we, we bill people through their through their tax bill, and they can get a four percent discount on their assessment rate. So the high, the more we charge them, the higher the dollar amount discount okay. is. Okay. And so we have to somehow make up that ground. And part of that is we're in the budget for the garbage and trash fund. We're using 145,000 of accumulated fund balance. Yeah. And the big thing is we're not charging a big enough spread between, you know, what we're paying waste management and what, what customers are going to pay. So, but the more, the higher the rates go up, the bigger that gap gets because of the fact that we're giving a discount. That was my only question. What is our legal ability to charge, let's just say, instead of allowing them, uh, if we charge normal, let's just say it's $100 and we are allowed the 4% by paying early, why can't we charge, just say, $102? So if they pay early, there's people who are only paying there, but the people that are paying only on time are paying 102 which would be more than what the actual service cost. So we can recoup some of these costs. Since you said legal, <laughs> well, I'm sorry. No, I mean, I'm just, I'm just wondering because to me, that's the one that makes the most sense. I mean, if you pay early, that's one thing that's great, but I think know. that the that in the definition of assessed costs, would you factor in um, a certain percentage of that uh, for early payment? I think we do that with fire assessment as well. So that is something that can look into in post rates. But I want to get with Frank and make sure that our definition of assessed costs did include that. If you wanted to include. Uh, some of that cost of the service into that. Because that, that's basically an overhead cost is the only discount. Correct. And that's one of the things that I was saying the same thing as we increase our pricing or unfortunately possibly have to increase pricing with waste management or whoever we look at. The idea is that so is that 4% is going to become more and more uh, difference for specifically. You know, and how what percentage of people, I think we've mentioned this before, what percentage of the folks in Lighthouse Point do you play with the 4% reduction? You said it was like very high, comparatively speaking. Yes, very high. And we, I mean, you have a duty to keep, to maintain a solvent operation. I mean, that's the idea. So that's part of the, the purpose of the assessment is to charge all reasonable customary costs to the customer for running this operation. If you were to put it in house, we could be charging more because we're just not as efficient as waste management. And is that okay compared to? Charging more because they're getting a discount through the property appraiser. You know? Oh, I know. I, I mean, I understand that. I'm just saying that it's yeah. just, we just got to figure it out because we can't be losing, you know, having to have a fund balance transfer of 140, 150, 160, maybe even more, according to what I was looking at. Yeah. Like I said, the legal issue is what's involved in the definition of your assessed cost for the providing the residential solid waste collection services. And we'll take a look at that. Then you all decide whether you want to assess all of those assessed costs or not. Sure. And finally, the transfer to the general fund for um, administrative cost allocation has gone up from thousand dollars to sixty five. We haven't increased that in a really long time and the uh, there's a multitude of people at the city that operate Chuck, John, myself included, um, and with that trash function. So that was really the purpose of that increase is to try and Try and keep up with it. And have some some connection with our actual costs of, of operating that. And next is debt service fund uh, mentioned earlier that the millage rate went down, and that equates to about eleven dollars a year savings per six hundred thousand dollars of assessed value. So there is some tangible savings when that low millage rate goes down. So um, it's about eleven dollars for an average single family home in the city. We have level debt service, so there's no increases of our costs. And, um, and we're using 10,000 of the fund balance to offset the military, as I mentioned earlier. Yeah, but why? I, that doesn't make much. That doesn't. I don't understand why we would do that. If rate, if assessed values are going up, and you can lower the millage because rates are, or the values are less. I'm sorry, the values are more. Shouldn't? Why are we taking a fund balance to contribute to that? If or shouldn't we just get the millage appropriate to what we think instead of taking from fund balance? Well, if I 
if we just set the millage to generate exactly how much we need to pay to debt service, then I'm just leaving this money sitting in, basically like leaving money in the bank that we could use to, instead of levying the whole 100% of what we need with the millage rate, we can lower that millage rate slightly and make up the difference with what's in the fund balance. Let's say it another way, Jason. This is money that's we've collected in excess over the years in the debt service fund. Oh, in the debt. Oh, it's debt service fund yes. balance. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. No, no, I was thinking like the emergency right. fund. No, or no, that's okay. not that. This debt is service just fund balance. Debt service fund. It's got a it. own fund. Got it. Got it. Got it. Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, lastly, stormwater so fund. Bills, uh, no recommended change to the assessment. Uh, the budget is up this year for 2019 due to it's following along with what's in the multi-year cyclical infrastructure improvements plan. And any major projects that are in that plan, if they come to fruition, most likely are going to require a separate commission action to award a bid since they're going to be over $20,000. Very nice picture. I know, right? <laughs> um, do you have any questions? Anything else we need to go over tonight? Commissioners, any questions for our finance director? I, mean, I would like to make a recommendation next year if we have been the city rather than the University of Florida on there. <laughs> Well, well, you like to call winners. I, I, I'm just counting around the room. I think you might be uh, not numbered. I'm just saying, if you love your city like us commissioners do, I think commissioners should be a higher, or the uh, city should be a higher priority than that. <laughs> well, that's some extra stuff. Smelly place in the swamp. Oh, uh, oh. <laughs> fighting <laughs> words. You call it the swamp, I don't know. At least you're not fighting about the fight. I had a. Commissioner Van Busker. I just had two questions, obviously, not so much focused toward Frank, but toward our capital improvement plans, uh, toward, toward the, the mayor more than our administration, is that uh, I saw that on the updates for, uh, we have a 2023 update dugouts on Danwith Park, and I know it sounds crazy, but those dugouts are, they, they're not going to last another three months, let alone four more years. There's holes in there. Which page are you I'm on the last page, page 60. Sorry about that. Where do you see dugouts? 2023. Oh. Sorry about that. Yeah, so it's, uh, uh, I, I just, I mentioned that. I know it's $10,000, but those tops of those, uh, the canopies are already have holes in them. There's already issues with them already. And I don't necessarily know if they could wait till 2023. As a matter of fact, like I said, I don't know if they could wait another three months, let alone another four years. I mean, they already do have rips in them, and they do provide not only sun protection, but also foul ball protection. I agree. I mean, I'm just, I, I just was milling through this, and uh, it was one of the things that I wanted to ask, or at least have a discussion. About doing it. Yeah. Now, yes. Okay. Sorry, I clarified. I guess I apologize. Yes, to do it this fiscal year. But or, or could we use more of a hard shade? Uh, you know, put this color quartz and others. Just because right now it's a oh, like right. canvas, some, you know, type thing. So you say like go to like more like a corrugated metal or something like that, Mike? You thinking? Yeah, something maybe. Just sense. because it'd be more permanent and it wouldn't be ripping because you get these. Not kids. As kids, just stand with I think that's a, that's a good idea. We can look at it, it may even lower the cost. I mean, we can certainly look at alternatives. I mean, we don't have money in the budget for current year 2018, so it would be increasing our deficit for this year if we were to do something this year. But we can certainly look into it and get some prices and uh, come back at a later date with what the prices would be. I would think um, it, it could be minimal if you were going to do a hard, some sort of. Uh, for lack of a better term, corrugated stuff, it should almost. I mean, you don't, you don't want to do a plastic material, obviously, no. so it would have to be a metal material. The problem with metal material is it rusts. Mm -hmm. So then you're looking at an aluminum material or something else, which is expensive. Aluminum is expensive. Lightning? Um, well, it, lightning, the. Well, you're already on a. You're on a fence. You've, you've got, got a little, fence all around it, so yeah. the lightning's not going to change much. But, I mean, we can certainly look at options. If that's a um, possibility, I would like yeah, to see some options to see what we could look at. I mean, obviously, like you said, if it's, we could make it something minimal cost, then that's one thing. Back, back, intermediate and too. Get, back in Chuck can get together on that. And, and there maybe something concepts. we can do for like a three or four year period, you know, that just to get us through that until it goes in there for a little more refined redo with the fencing and other pieces. Well, I mean, there's been discussions also about uh, – the whole backstop at Danwood Park and what might need to be done with that. So if we were to do an interim 
fixed, that might work, and then deal with the whole backstop area at a future date as well. That's perfectly fine also. I think that's yeah. a great idea. Because you got to remember, um, is years ago, everything was pulled out further from the backstop towards the Civitan building, and it got moved back. And part of the reason it got moved back is because in the um, older leagues, we wanted to extend the outfield fence. And the only way to extend the outfield fence was to move home plate back, right. and it creates a whole other set of issues. Um, you've also got that storage shed over there, which creates a set of issues. So uh, we were talking about that as being something we're going to have to address, that whole concept over there. So that's a much bigger project. So you know, we can certainly look at it and uh, come back at a future meeting to discuss it. I don't know that we can do it this year, but we can certainly look at getting it done before baseball season. Okay. And then uh, one other question is uh, I was going over the other uh, infrastructure ports on our roads. I saw that the marina area was obviously going to be paved in 2021. Get what page are you on? I am on page 58. Sorry, i got to do that better job of that. So page 58, 2021, it says marina area, milling and paving. Uh, I know we're doing the reuse water down there. Is that what time we're expecting the reuse to be done? That's when. That's based on the schedule we've gotten from Pompano. Some of that Pompano will actually be doing this. Right. Stuff. Okay. I just want. So, right. I was just yeah. wondering. I just, you know, because obviously, if they're going to be coming in there and milling and paving half of it, we're going to obviously have to do it either different time periods. So, right. I just was asking about that. Anything else, Commissioner Rutherford? Uh, there was one more thing. Hold on, there, Commissioner Joff. And actually, no, we answered that question, so that was a be it for me. Commissioners, any other questions? Back in the paving. I mean, is this as it's set up now with the 2019-20, et cetera, uh, taking into consideration all the water we use, Pompano redoing the full pavement? Or will they continue to do that? Because I know where they where they really trenched it, they've now repaved, and I think they've done a pretty good job. That's correct. But as they start moving into the side streets, no, and we'll take mine, for example, mm -hmm. um, there was a question. We asked them if they would be able to do in the city right away rather than the street, and they said no. So I'm assuming the street will still be torn up. Will they still be paving the entire street now? Since that is a smaller line. That's to be seen. The, the initial trunk line was full pavement, edge to edge, mm -hmm. and then they went into this phase 1B where they had some money left, and they did a little bit more in the marina, so they continued to do the whole street. So in future meetings, if they ask, I'll say, well, just like you started, let's do the whole street. Okay, and have we got anybody hooked up yet? Last time I saw there was waters going up. It <laughs> happened yesterday. Actually, I think I added it to my report for this evening. Okay. Uh, they did the first connection. I got a confirmation yesterday, and I then I asked. Where is that person else. located? Where is it? Where, was that? Are they on Lighthouse Drive? I'm assuming somewhere. Or? Yeah, it was uh, 24th Street somewhere. Okay. There's still a lot of falls in motion where they have to, the plumbers coordinating the schedule, they have to do the in-home inspection for cross connections, and then they finally go and help them out. So, yeah, it's the actually first happening. Yesterday. First one's happening. And is there any way we could get maybe an update from the city of Pompano with their new timeline? Because I know they presented us sure. dozens of them. None of them made sense, but one of where they are today with current funding and where they anticipate moving to. I can tell you the next phase, phase two, official phase two, is north of uh, Marina Drive, 27th Street. That should finish the north side there. So I'll ask him about an update. Okay. That'll be fine. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Hey. Looking forward to it. Like Anybody else? Okay. Any other commissioners' questions? Commissioner Johnson, anything? Yeah. Any questions? Talk to the Google next. There you go. Um, real quick, and I think I've asked for something like this before. I, I kind of view our, I know our capital improvement plan isn't a budget. It's kind of a plan. Um, but it does kind of keep us on task with capital expenditures in the city. So, Frank, you know, Mike gave you some homework. So what, what I envision and would like to see is in our fiscal 2017-2018 budget, we had certain items forecasted to be done in 2018-2019 fiscal year. You follow me so far? I'd like to see a comparison of what was forecasted to be done in 2018-2019 in the 2017-2018 budget 
and what we're actually putting in that budget for those capital kind of expenditures. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that would just be kind of a, a way we can look at it. There might be a very good reason why something's in the 2017, 2018 budget that didn't make it into the actual 2018, 2019 budget, but just to see it, kind of just give us a, make sure we're staying on task on some of the capital items. So, so just to make sure I'm on the same page, so you'd like to see last year, this time of year, we said in 2018, 19, we're going to be doing all these things. Capital, from a capital improvement standpoint. In that infrastructure plan. Correct. And you want to know now what, made what it we think we're going to do one year from now, which is... No, no, no I want to know what, what we're actually budgeting to do this year, in 2018, 2019. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, yep. just the matchup of it. Yep. And there may be reasons why we right. didn't do it. Yeah. Maybe but, don't need it anymore. Exactly. Or, you know, but just to blew it away. Yep. <clears throat> that would be helpful for me because that is infrastructure projects are important. Everybody would agree with that. That's a pretty obvious statement. And just to see what's being done and what we park. I think sixteen million dollars will be going that soon. That's right. Hopefully. All right. Anything else, commissioners, or shall we adjourn? One, oh, oh, sorry. Sure, Margaret, just an update, if you would, on where we are in this lawsuit with the county on the bridge repair and all of that stuff. Is that something that's been... Can we do, can we do that at the commission meeting? Yeah. That's fine. fine. I didn't know if it was a budgeted issue or not. Since it's $300,000, it's a big number, yeah. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll adjourn unless there's any other questions. We'll adjourn. Great job, Thank Brian. You. No matter what job he says, I think he did a good job. I still think we need to get rid of the University of Florida. I think I've said that so many years. You